Uh, welcome everyone. And I'll hand you over to the chair um, today, um, Raj Tultiani. Over to you, Raj. A very big welcome uh, to get ready for this event, which is doing the preparation for February's uh, Race Quality Week. Uh, five months to go. I can assure you it'll arrive pretty fast. Um, I'm Raj Tultiani. I'm a co-founder co of Race Quality Matters. I'm also the Chief Executive of Green Park and chairing today's online meeting. Thank you for joining us. It's great to have so much support here today. We're expecting uh, just over 200 organizations, um, attendees from our existing network, including ethnic minority colleagues from across the UK, senior leaders, DNI specialists, and allies from a whole range of sectors, and many new people. So, welcome new people to the group. Uh, today's session is going to be action packed. So, hopefully, it'll be dynamic and fast paced, focusing on action, not education. Uh, and we'll include some interactive polls. I'm delighted to have two long-term supporters uh, as expert speakers, two of the top 10 diversity and inclusion leaders in the country. If you don't believe me, ask the diversity headhunter, Lorraine Martin and Mark Lomas, who will share their experiences of Race Equality Week in 2021. Thank you both for your ongoing support, both to this cause and uh, to the wider cause of racial equality and equity in the workplace, for, of which you have been campaigning successfully for decades. Um, even though the event is virtual, you will have the opportunity to collaborate in some brief um, breakout rooms. And you'll also hear from my learned fellow co-founder, Javid Thomas, about the solutions that you can build into your activity plan for Race Quality Week. We aim to close at quarter to six. Um, if you have any questions along the way, please do put them in the chat and we'll try to answer them. Um, your sound will be auto disabled until the discussion groups, but do feel free to tweet and post social media content during or after the event. Uh, you'll see our handles on the right hand side of the slide. So to get us warmed up, we're going to move on to our first poll. Mish, if you could launch that for our um, network. So we've got 10 questions. Question number one. Would you consider yourself to be an ally, an ethnic minority, or appropriate equivalent, or rather not say? So, of course, is to get everyone to understand who's on the call. Question two is about your role within the organization. Question three, whether Race Quality Week is already in your diary. We've made that quite binary to, let, uh, to give us an idea of who's on board again and who needs some support to get on board this year. Uh, did you participate in last year's REM? I think about 50 percent of today's um, uh, group is new to REM. So it'd be really interesting to see how that comes up. Five, uh, how well do you think your organization tackles race inequality? Of course, an interesting great range of answers there. And I'll leave you to go through that in your own time and just share the results with you when the poll has been closed. We panel members have been told in no uncertain terms, we're not allowed to vote or take part. I'm not sure how our three votes would make a, make, a, make a vast difference, but, you know, I would say that I did a panel this afternoon for the Investment Association, and we've really got more people on this call after five minutes than they had after an hour. <laughs> so clearly uh, this is still a topic where people with lived experience feel that there's plenty more to be done. We want to move away from those kind of performative narratives where people are linking diversity and inclusion to their marketing or their brand strategy as opposed to the reality of how people experience their brand. So 62% of us are ethnic minorities, 1% would rather not say. The rest are allies. Um, we've got a pretty even mix here, so 19% race network leads. I think there's 750 race network leads in this REM network now across the UK. 32% um, are from diversity and inclusion, 12% uh, from HR, uh, only 23% from other. So normally we've got quite high other because a lot of senior leaders uh, attend this, but that's a good spread. 58% of you have already got REM in your network organisations diary. Thank you ever so much. I appreciate that. 42 of you have not. Let's see where we are with that in 45 minutes or so. 32% um, of you took part in Race Equality Week last year. 27% of you are unsure. Right. So 
out of your um, the question about how well your organization is doing. 34% are doing a little, 34% are doing fairly well. So that's very positive compared to next year and potentially reflects the um, constituents of the meeting. Um, only 4% only are saying not at all, and only 5% are saying really well. So a lot in that middle ground, which shows a lot of um, opportunity for improvement. Question six, have you noticed any change? Now, this would be crazy if there wasn't a great deal of change in the last year we've had in this organization. 4% not, not, not at all. 14% not enough. Um, the biggest voting here is there's been a little bit of improvement in the last 12 months, the 42%. So um, I think everyone who is realistic enough will know that these things won't change overnight, but it's also really important that we guide organizations to do things that actually make a difference and aren't um, either tokenistic or short term in their outlook. Uh, number seven, do you feel your leaders and managers are committing to tackle race equality? 62% say yes, I'm sure that's up on all of our po polls last year. And 30% say no, so 30% uh, say I'm sure. So again, you know, what an interesting dispersion there that despite all of the um, things that are going on in organizations, there's still a third of us broadly who aren't sure where our leaders stand. Um, do you feel your leaders and managers are confident talking about race? Okay, so this is again really interesting spread, isn't it? You know, the biggest two things are not enough and, and a little bit. So sort of if you like below the halfway line <coughs> and 5% feel their leaders are very comfortable talking about race, which again would be a big improvement on what we've been seeing last year. 53% of organizations are not intending to publish their ethnicity gap. <coughs> um, with that being political, that is an area where I'm sure government are looking at. And do you think publishing it will help tackle race equality? So 56% of you think that will make a difference, whilst 36% of you are not sure. So interesting results. Final question. Um, so thank you for taking part in all of that. So Javid and I curated Race Equality Matters in response to what has been referred to as the moment last summer um, around Black Lives Matters as a movement and then sort of awakening of corporate consciousness that something had to be done. Um, it sparked us to carry out 70 senior uh, race equality network leaders and um, around 300 additional conversations with senior business leaders to just get an idea of what would make a difference. The findings at that stage were bleak. The majority of people could not name a single organization that was viewed as good for racial equality. One organization came up twice and that's in over 300 conversations. So we were starting from a very difficult place. Um, what we've done in that time is try and help organizations to experience um, a bit more empathy with customers and staff, but also to move away from a kind of addiction to uh, showing what their corporate future was or what their aspirations were and to start dealing with their diversity balance sheet as it was and as it was seen by people in their organizations. So to get them to become more data confident and more likely to co-create solutions with people in their organization as opposed to create them in uh, hermetically sealed leadership teams. So rather then, rather like today, organizations are saying a lot, there's a lot of PR gesturing, but a lack of real process, progress. We wanted to move organizations and leaders from just talking about race into committing to take accountable and measurable actions. That's what we think is the door towards meaningful change. In the future, we don't want anyone in this network to look back and see that the summer of 2020 ended up just being another moment and the real opportunity for change was lost forever. So since then, we've been listening and co-creating impactful concepts and solutions, some of which we'll discuss today in collaboration with those of lived experience across a spectrum of organizations, industries and sectors who are committed to this movement around creating a, a fairer, more equal playing field for people to succeed or fail in their true self best, based on their ability to do their job and contribute, contribute to the organization that they're in. 
one of the solutions in Race Equality Week, one of the, one of the solutions we came up with was with Race Equality Week. And that's why we're here today. We're going to share a quick video to introduce the new people to it and some of the key concepts within it. Nish, if you'd like to play the video, please. Overall Race Quality Week took place last February and this year with over 2,000 organisations. Uh, so last year with over 2,000 organisations, it was a great start. But to create a more sustainable and meaningful change that we all want to see, we need more organisations to get involved and drive change across the length and breadth of the UK and beyond. And to do that in a consistent way again, uh, against similar techniques so we can share best practice, share learning and create a real culture of accountability. We need you all to be part of it. Please tell others. I'd like to thank the volunteers and supporters. But remember, number one thing to remember, it's the 7th to 13th of February, 2022. And I'm now going to hand over to my co-founder, Javid Thomas, who will share how your organisation can get involved, 
And shortly after, you'll hear from two trailblazing organizations, and as I said, to the top 10 diversity and inclusion experts in the country, um, Lorraine from Network Rail and Mark from HS2. They both took part in 2021, and perhaps they can share some of their experiences. Thank you, Raj. So there are three ways you and your organization can get involved. Uh, next slide, please, Anish. Um, you can run your own activities, and these may include internal events, networking events, showcasing role models, and panel discussions. Next slide. You could also join a series of thought leadership events, um, some organized by Race Quality Matters itself, and some by other networks and organizations that we will promote uh, for, for you to access. Uh, so these were the ones that happened earlier this year. Next slide. The third way you can get involved is by implementing any of the race equality matter solutions, which include the virtual badge campaign, the big promise, tea break and safe space. And new for 2022, next slide, will be our soon to be launched My Name Is. Uh, more on that will be coming soon. Um, next slide. I'm going to start by sharing two very visual ways you can promote your participation and commitment to Race Equality Week. The first one is through the virtual badge campaign, which enables you to publicly share your support. We've seen that last year, 25% of organisations saw other organisations using these. There's a social media badge, virtual background, and we provide an email signature. You can download all this um, from our website. Next slide. Uh, next slide again, thank you. Um, our first solution we want to share with you is all about turning words into meaningful action. And we'd like to show the Big Promise video to help bring us to life. Thank you, Nish. The Big Promise is a UK-wide initiative where organisations and their employees commit a promise to deliver real impact on race inequality in their workplace. Race Equality Matters Community has reviewed 15 charters with over 200 commitments that are measurable and will create meaningful change, from which we have identified bespoke sets of magnificent seven promises for board members and executives, senior leaders, allies and ethnic minority employees. We also have the Big Promise Guide. This guide, co-created with those with lived experience through research, it provides step-by-step -step support. The guide consists of three phases and seven steps. The benefits of the guide are Clear accountability, clear and transparent aims, simple but effective approach, transparent and measurable commitments, and an opportunity to hold senior leaders to account.
I'm now delighted to introduce our first expert uh, and speaker, Lorraine Martin. Hello, Lorraine. Um, you can unmute yourself. Um, Lorraine is the Director of Diversity and Inclusion at Network Rail, which maintains and develops Britain's rail infrastructure. It has over um, 40,000 employees and is the fastest growing railway in Europe. Lorraine leads a centre of expertise which supports Network Rail's ambition to be more open, diverse and an inclusive business. Lorraine has been awarded both MB and OB for her work on diversity and inclusion. And so we're delighted and honored to have her join us today. So thank you, Lorraine. So we understand Lorraine Network Rail ran a variety of activities during Race Equality Week. How did you go about planning and delivering it? Uh, well, thank you for that introduction, Javid, and welcome to everybody on the call. And it's an honor to be with you uh, today. Um, how do we go about planning it? Well, I, I need to say first up, thank you to my team. So I have a team of uh, six full-time equivalents that work tirelessly to promote and integrate diversity and inclusion into what we do. And they are ably supported by our employee network, specifically cultural fusion, which is for black, ethnic, uh, minority, uh, Asian and allies. Um, so anyone really can join that network if they're so minded, if they're positively curious. Um, and then we have a bank of uh, diversity and inclusion champions who also are really active in the space. And I call them my kind of volunteer workforce. So of the 43,000 employees, we've got at least two and a half thousand of diversity and inclusion champions. And then you have my, my small number of uh, the team. So yeah, we, we kind of really were, were, were set up, I think, for success. Um, and so we knew when the week was coming and we signed up immediately. And it also fits in with our overarching approach to diversity and inclusion. So in a sense, it wasn't a hard thing for us to integrate. Um, what it did really usefully was give us a, a focus and an attention with a specific date in mind um, to do some of the things that we were doing and, and use the umbrella of race equality matters as, as a really useful way of, of amplifying some of the discussions and some of the things that we're doing. Brilliant, thank you. And your larger organization, would you have some advice for smaller organizations? Yeah, I think, I think being planning, I think do one thing well. <laughs> um, you know, you don't need a lot of resources. Um, there's multimedia, you can ally with different, other, different organizations. Um, I think communication is really, really important. So whatever the scale and size of your organization, I think, you know, making sure that people are aware that it's happening and that you've got a position and you've got a message to say is really, really important. So for the likes of a big organization like Network Rail, we had activities every day up and down the country. We kicked off the event with our chief executive and uh, our group HRD announcing that the week was starting. Um, we had a, 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 a session, a well-being set, sorry, a, a webinar which was hosted by our diversity and inclusion champions on microaggressions and white privilege, which our chief exec attended. There was over 200 people attended that event. We also hosted a, a tea break session, which had a, 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 a conversation around um, are my language is hindering hindering um, my career, which is very very you know topical at the time. So I think really for small organisations, you've got license, you've got creativity, you've got opportunities to you know pick one really good thing, plan for it well, start now, and and deliver. Brilliant, thank you. I think like you said, you know, there's access to this is collaboration, so you don't have to do it on your own. It's looking at other organizations that are doing stuff, hence that's why we've the events calendar and then sharing some of our solutions. Um, um you um you you um what how did you promote your activity? What channels did you use internally? So we use multimedia channels really. So in in uh at Network Cray, we've got our intranet site and we've got something that, which is a I guess I, I guess it's like Facebook, sorry, Facebook. Um it's called uh, Yammer, yeah. and so we published a whole raft of things on Yammer. We had an article on Connect, um, again, which will be reached by different people. Um, our employee networks are really good at promoting the week. And we also did posts um, externally. So on LinkedIn, we posted um, activities and we encouraged everybody to, to let others know what we were doing and that we were taking the week quite seriously. So you know, multi-channel, multimedia approach. Again, whether you're a small or large organization, that 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 facility generally is, is open to everybody. 
Great, thanks. And one thing you said, and we heard from other organizations, actually is engaging senior leadership. How did you go about getting senior leaders to um, in, get involved in the first uh, ever Race Quality Week? Um, so we'd already been really quite active in, in the space, particularly in race equality, having done some um, work on the disparities for our Black, Asian and minority ethnic colleagues within Network Rail. So I think we were live to the, to the issue. So um, advising our exec that it's coming and, and, and asking them to send messages through their teams, through their line managers, wasn't a, wasn't a difficult feat because, as I said, the environment was, was really ready. But I think what was really helpful was our chief exec, uh, Andrew Haynes, making an announcement to start the week. And, and, and the tone gets set from the top. So then other leaders went on to Yammer, our, our internal um, network, and they talked about their experience of reverse mentoring. Um, and they talked about pledges that they wanted to make. So really the, the level of engagement, I think, is important in terms of leadership setting the culture. Um, but for us, you know, people were ready because we've been doing the work for, for some time. Brilliant. Thank you. And um, you know, a lot of the audience today are new to Race um, Equality Week. Uh, it'll be their first time. So why do you think it's important? What impact do you think it's had on your organisation and colleagues? So it, it, it's important for, for us at Network Run. I think it's important for us as a, as, as a society, really, because it's an opportunity, again, to share, to, to shine a lens on the inequalities that Black, Asian and minority ethnic colleagues, it, it, people experience. Um, and also get people to commit to doing something <laughs> um, during that week, which which I think helps to, to shift shift attitudes, uh, improve learning, shift the culture that we're we're trying to improve. And I know for Network Rail, we use this as an opportunity to publish our ethnicity pay gap report. Mm. And we're really proud of that report because we talked about intersectionality. So we're trying to broaden people's understanding of, of how things are connected and how different groupings or collections of people are experience um, race inequality. Um, so for, 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 for us, it's really about a, another tool in our toolkit that helps to chibi people along in, in the right direction of, of addressing inequality and, be, and becoming more actively anti-racist. Brilliant, thank you. And just to round up, we got some feedback from some of your, you know, colleagues in your in your organisation. Um, Nish, if you could put the slides up, and uh, Lorraine, would you would you mind just reading them the feedback we got from some of your colleagues? Uh, should come up next slide. Okay, so race equality has been a great stride forward in giving colleagues at Network Rail a platform for people to share their experiences and importantly for people to know they are taking it seriously. And the they is us, Network Rail. So. That's fabulous. It's all unprompted, but I guess not. I didn't ask them to say it. No, no, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's really been exciting to know that the issue of the discussion of race equality is being kept alive. Yep, that's absolutely. I mean, I guess that that goes to the point that I was talking about. You know, it, it's it's an iterative process. As a black woman in the organisation, it, it can only fill me with hope that we can turn talk into positive action. And and I think it, I think that's a really great quote because it is about manifesting and demonstrating both your commitment but also the the, the longevity of the efforts that need to be made and, and i think that transparency that uh, race equality week affords us is, is a really really important aspect of that drive for for better equality brilliant thank you thank you thank you lorraine for your time and thank you for joining us today much appreciated um and actually to to to, to join it all up so lorraine touched upon um, network Rail ran an initiative called tea break during race quality week um, it's a solution that encourages brave conversations throughout an organization uh, network rail been running for a while and we then co-created it with their cultural fusion network for you all to access so thank you to network rail and culture fusion so we just like to show a video to sort of bring that to life thank you nish
The Tea Break provides the framework and opportunity for an organisation to hear the honest voice and feelings of its colleagues about race inequality. All employees are invited to join a one-hour themed online discussion about an issue that matters. Individuals can remain anonymous, listen to others, or actively participate. It's freedom of choice. Benefits of the tea break include fosters inclusion, supports well-being, highlights issues for action, removes the barriers and the fear of talking about race, normalises conversations on race and builds understanding of the issues. You can also join the Race Equality Matters Tea Break community. We've set up a peer support network on Guild. Guild is a community app for professionals. It provides private, secure spaces for collaborative discussion. Guild is already helping over 20,000 people have conversations that matter. We also have a tea break guide, co-created by those with lived experiences of race inequality. This guide consists of four phases and 11 steps. This guide outlines the practical steps you can follow to set up and run a tea break. Okay, thank you. So the resources um, are in, in the chat and also you can access so um, and a big also thank you has to go to Sonia and Sharon from uh, the Network Rails Culture Fusion Network, um, who were phenomenal in, in helping us get here as well as lots of other people but I want to personally um, name drop if that's okay on that side. So Race Equality Week is a great time to hold a tea break um, uh, for your organisation. We mentioned that this session will be interactive and now we have a great opportunity for you to collaborate with each other. In a minute, we'll automatically place you into um, breakout rooms. Nisha suggests um, six people if that's possible. And you'll have about eight minutes where you have an opportunity to get great ideas from each other. It will be quick, it will be dynamic, and hopefully will help develop some suggestions to help each other. We suggest someone volunteers to be a chair just to enable everyone to have a say. Uh, and, and someone maybe keep track of time. Because it's limited time, we suggest you don't um, introduce yourselves. Um, you can see obviously people's names on there and obviously um, unmute yourself when you go through and we will call you back when ready. The question for this one is how could you use tea break during race equality week? So thoughts and ideas around that. So um, Nish will just um, give you access to your discussion groups. Please um, join it and then we'll call you back in about eight minutes. Thank you very much. 
Yeah, welcome back, everyone. I hope you found um, it helpful, interesting uh, subject matter. I, I heard some great co conversation questions in my um, thing where people said about approaching uncomfortable conversations. Um, do access the guide. It does exp it does have steps of how to make the conversation happen and suggested themes and topics to talk about microaggressions. Some have talked about um, hair um, and a whole range of things. And also it can be live. So actually after the you know, the three uh, English footballers were racially abused after the um, the championships. You know, some organisations run a tea break just for that. Uh, so again, it's a real opportunity to get that get that dialogue go it going. Um, and some will in, introduce external people. So um, please do access our um, guide on that. Um, what um, I'd like to now do is introduce you to our next speaker, who's on screen there, Mark Lomas, who has kindly joined us from his holiday. And he is the winner of the furthest away. Um, he will say where he is. Uh, Mark, do you wanna, are, are you off mute? Yes, I'm off mute. Yeah, okay. I'm. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in sunny Bermuda today. Yeah, so that that isn't a backdrop. That is <laughs> where he is. So I really appreciate him joining us while he's um, on his holiday. Mark is head of equality, diversity, inclusion at HS2, the new high speed uh, railway linking up London, the Midlands, North, and Scotland. It serves eight of Britain's ten largest cities and connects around thirty million people. Mark has delivered numerous diversity inclusion projects in the UK and internationally for organisations across a wide variety of sectors. He's also a published author of the topic and has been a great um, supporter for Race Equality Matters. Um, Mark was instrumental in driving um, HS2 activity for Race Equality Week uh, last February, so it's fantastic to um, have the opportunity to hear from him. Um, so I guess the first question, Mark, why um, is Race Equality Week a key date in the calendar for HS2? Um, I, I think the I think the the best thing to say about it is it gives a real focus on on what we've achieved. So um, you know it is about what we've done with our metrics, what we've put in place, how effective the programs have have been that we put in place, and also gives us a bit of a reality check on on what we need to do better and i think if i if i contrasted we had this conversation before we kind of came on if i contrasted sort of black history month versus race equality week um i think raj said it said it really well so you know black history month there's a focus on education and, and black excellence and for race equality week it's about action and accountability and that is how we use it yes there's elements of raising awareness etc but it is about what have we done and who has it made a difference for how have those key statistics changed on uh, recruitment, progression, performance management? How's the culture shifted? What are people experiencing? Um, and that's why it's so uh, key in the calendar. I think the other thing for me is it, um, uh, not only does it make sure that the, the rhetoric more closely matches the reality, but there will always be those in the organization who don't like these types of activities, no matter what kind of organization you are in, there will be a kind of silent minority and then sometimes a vocal minority who don't like it. And uh, for me, what it does is it gives a constant drumbeat throughout the calendar year on uh, race equality. And it, it helps everyone to understand that there is only one direction of travel. So this is not going to change. It's inevitable, we will keep pushing, things will keep getting better. And so for me, I think it's really important that it kind of keeps that drumbeat going. Okay. And what, what um, do you think really stood out um, at HS2 during your race quality week? I think there were a couple of things. Um, first of all, we had, a, we had a BAME network book club um, and uh, the whole organization got involved in, in reading the uh, Renietta Lodge book, Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race. That was first run with our, with our executive and our senior leadership team and then cascaded throughout the whole organization. Um, and that was, that was really effective and also prompted a huge range of conversation. Look, for me, it's really important that dissent isn't kind of a, a, a quasi-disciplinary sort of matter, right? Everyone can have their own opinion. But what it did mean was we were having a completely nuanced uh, conversation about race. That was that was much, much, much better. I think the other thing that um, really worked for us is, is we launched something similar to T-Break, but called Courageous Conversations. 
Um, and again, this was developed through collaboration with our supply chain. Um, Jacobs in our supply chain had been doing something similar. Um, and that kind of sharing what works across organizations was really useful. And we use those courageous conversations for people to talk about their lived experience, both within HS2 and in society, for people to understand exactly um, what it means to be an ethnic minority within an organization, within society, and, and how you manage some of those complications. So that was incredibly effective. And then, of course, we had Lorraine, who came and gave us our, our keynote uh, our keynote speech, which was great. Um, and at the end of that, we had our CEO kind of give his reflections on um, what his learning journey has been. And now he is the, uh, he is the, the, the uh, sponsor. Uh, for I think Minority Network, et cetera, which we are, are renaming this week for uh, for Race Equality Week this week. So um, for us, it's been a, a, a huge catalyst for communication, to share what we're doing, to share our stats, to be transparent. And uh, and I think the best thing is it helps people hold us to account. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, and again, echoing what Rain says, is getting senior leadership involved, um, which, which, is, which is crucial, provides that window of opportunity. Um, what are you planning for next year's Race Equality Week? So I think um, next year we will do a focus on collaborating with our supply chain. Um, we will be launching another book club. We are um, we're currently debating which which, which book uh, <laughs> it will be. Um, I'm a big fan of, of Akala's uh, Natives and also a few of hers is uh, are British. So um, those would be two on my list, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure the network and others will have some. So we'll probably take a vote on that. Um, we'll be doing uh, profiles of our Black and BAME senior staff across the organization. We've we've increased uh, we've increased the numbers uh, and the representation presentation over the last couple of years, so we'll be doing that. We'll also be having some uh, focused conversations on mixed heritage. We, we sort of trialed that early in the year, and it was absolutely fascinating what came out of that, um, the sort of line people feel they need to tread, whether it be with their families or in an organization. So we'll be having that. Um, and critically, we'll be running Safe Space, so a version of Safe Space um, with our board and, and executive uh, an executive team. Those uh, safe space will probably be um, the sort of the key point of this race equality week. And what do you hope to um, get out of running safe space? Um, again, it's it's about the actions that we're going to to take. So um, we will be uh, we will be selecting a group of people from across the organization from various uh, various levels. Some within the network, some not, some senior, some junior, to have a conversation with the board about um, what the reality looks like for them. So what are the things we've done? And yes, we have the stats to say we're improving and all all this and that, but but. What do they want from the board? What do they want from the executive? How are we going to how are we going to uh, put our foot on the gas in some of these areas? Um, and again, it's about that two way conversation. You know, um, we've been uh, we've been driving at continuous in improvement, and and we've been achieving that. Uh, but it will always feel too slow for some. Right? It will always feel that. Um, however, we keep on our current trajectory, and we if we look back in five years' time. Things will be things will be very different then. So for me, um, it is about getting that board accountability, that executive accountability, um, and that's built into our performance management structures at HS2. So that will be a really key feature of that safe space. Brilliant, thank you. And um, obviously, um, um, HS2, um, you're quite um, you've been working on race for quite a while. Um, wh why do you think? Um, organizations that maybe sort of like it's, it's new space for them or new area especially yeah. since last year why should they get involved in race equality week next year um it may sound a bit pithy but like if, if not now then when right here's a here's a great opportunity mm. to, to 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 do it um you've got to start somewhere right it, Things don't have to be easy. Not everyone has to like it. Um, progress isn't always universally accepted, but that doesn't matter. It will matter to the people who need it in your organization, and it will matter to those viewing your organization from outside. And I think being able to sort of raise that awareness and put a real focus, not just on the actions that you're taking, but the effectiveness of those actions is really very important. That kind, of, um, that kind of transparency, willing to admit when you've done well, when you've not done so well, and asking for help on how you can do things better from the people that really know it and feel it. 
Um, that is, that's very powerful. And it can, it can only help, you know, if you ask like a million CEOs, I'm sure a million CEOs would say, I just want my company to perform better. Well, you know, we, we run a bunch of sites across the UK and, and we know that interconnected sites, inclusive sites work better. Well, to have an inclusive environment, you need to approach these difficult things. You, you can't shy away from it. And so that's why I would say um, that organization should, uh, should really engage in race equality. We can put that focus on accountability, make it a good thing, not a scary thing. Brilliant, thank you. Uh, and I, just to sort of sum a couple of things you said, I think if not now, when? Absolutely. And I guess, you know, if not, why not? Is, 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 yeah. is, is, is the other point so that's fantastic and we, we you know picking up what um mark said you know we, we're running more of these race quality week events in the lead up to it so again we can learn more from each other and and, and share so um thanks tons mark really really appreciate your time uh, for joining us on that um one thing mark talked about was they're looking to run safe space um so what we'd like to do is show um introduce you to um safe space nisha if you can show the video please Race Equality Matters provides organisations with the tools, resources and skills to implement them. Race Equality Matters is not a talking shop. We inspire change by creating solutions and working with organisations to implement them. One of those solutions is Safe Space. Safe Space is a two hour facilitated dialogue between three to five senior leaders or exco and up to 10 ethnic minority colleagues. Safe Space will provide a protected environment to enable brave conversations in order to generate action, remain focused and achieve a meaningful outcome driven by the people it matters to. Safe Space will help you achieve facilitated meaningful dialogue between ethnic minority employees and their senior leaders who must be willing to make a commitment and take action to address some of the key issues raised. Safe Space is split into three distinct parts. One, inform and educate. Two, understand the issues. And three, take action. It is more than just a conversation. We also run safe space workshops and have a how to do it right guide, which focuses on finding the right people to participate and create a safe and constructive environment for these conversations to take place. This guide consists of four key phases and 11 steps with top tips and checklists to assist as well as a focus on well-being. This guide will enable brave conversations, facilitate uncomfortable discussions and drive meaningful change. Thank you. Again, resources available and Claire's putting um, a link to it in the chat. This is all available 
on the website. Um, so thank you for that. I also wanted to say a Mental Health First Aid England have been very supportive on Safe Space and Tea Break because the well-being um, uh, for ethnic minority colleagues being involved in Safe Space and Tea Break is absolutely crucial. So they've given lots of tips and advice um, um, during these um, um, in the guide. So thank you for them. Um, before we share six top tips uh, for running Race Quality Week, we'd love to get your input and thoughts on what could be next year's theme for Race Equality Week. So as a quick poll, um, just tick as many of the um, suggestions as you think would be good. So action, not just words, time for action, it's everyone's business, listen, take action, listen, act, and let's not go back to normal. You can vote for more than one just to let you know that. And we will take on board your input um, to help us uh, finalize and shape uh, 2022. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Um, can end the poll. As you can see, action, not just words, came up high, uh, the highest, and then it's everyone's business. But we, we'll look at all this. And again, it, it gives us a sense uh, where you can see Listen Act. Um, only uh, one in five have done that. So you can sort of see where people want to put the emphasis. So really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, we spoke, next slide please, we've spoken to a few organisations um, and we thought um, it'd be useful together to put some prompts. This will be available on our website and I'm conscious of time and I want to have the time that we can do the next breakout room. So I will just briefly go through this. So step one is identify a race equality week lead. So who's going to run it? It might be yourselves or another person. And again, if someone's got passion for this, um, brief them on race equality week um, and then let them know what support and resources they get from within your organisation, but also access to our stuff. Step two, um, um, as Lorraine and Mark said, which is the next slide, um, is to engage senior leaders, explain to them the benefit of being involved in Race Equality Week. Um, we will have a list of all the organisations involved, so you know, why isn't your organisation? Um, and again, it, if you're not already starting to do it, uh, why not now? And then as Mark and Lorraine said, you know, it, it adds value to what they're doing already. Uh, step three, um, we recommend, and I think Lorraine touched upon this, you know, um, a wider group, a task and finish group is not just for one person. So this group will help shape, drive and implement it. And I think Mark even mentioned about, you know, they're going to come up with a book, um, but, you know, a number of people, uh, you know, sharing thoughts and ideas and voting upon it. Um, and what you want is a diverse group within there. And again, different skill sets and maybe internal comms, you, you, um, it, it will be an important person maybe in this group. Step four is about coming up with activities. So, um, yeah, you could use any of our solutions. Um, you'll go into a group in a minute now and, and find out things, but we run more workshops and we'll share um, ideas and thoughts um, of what you could be running. And I think Mark and Lorraine both said some examples of what their organization has done. Step five, and um, both mentioned it's all about the communication, you know, up and down the line and across the line. It's involving your race network if you have it, involving HR, involving senior leaders. Think about the different um, avenues you can do it. I think Lorraine mentioned Yammer, uh, um, others are using posters or the internet, et cetera. And then the final step is deliver your activity during the week. Um, what's, what's, what's great, we want to create this um, show, this movement. So do take photos, promote your activity in social media, tag us and tell us so we can profile your organisation and what you're doing. You know, we want to let everyone know what is happening and, and, and keep this um, movement going. So thank you for that. So our final breakout um, collaborative discussion is share ideas as to what your organization might do for Race Quality Week. We appreciate some of you may not be, you know, have not thought about it through, but we'll go into little groups of um, six again, Nish, if that's okay. And then if, if people could just share ideas, um, we'll allow sort of seven or so minutes for that. Um, so if Nish will give you your groups. So what could your organization do or is thinking of doing for Race Equality Week 2022? Thank you. Okay. so. Um, let's go through some of these results together. Um, do you think your organisation will take part in Race Quality Week? Well, 80% yes, 19% or 18% unsure. So 80% yes, thank you very much. Uh, when do you think you'll start planning? Quite a big spread here. 13% already have. Um, and uh, the majority of people are going to start planning in uh, November. So only a week, only a month away or so. Um, do you think REM will help tackle racial equality in your organization? The acid test, 50%, it will be a catalyst for change. 3% not at all. So thank you, 56%. For the 3%, it didn't make a difference. Please let me and Jarvid know why, 
how you think it could be improved? Um, how easy do you think it will be to get your senior leaders on board with Race Quality Week? Fairly easily, 51%, with difficulty, 19%. So it's still a big uh, challenge around engagement, if you think almost one in five senior leaders are not interested or can be difficult to engage with. How confident do we feel about planning Race Quality Week? Interesting mix here. So 27% a little confident, but would like more support. We're here to help. 37% fairly confident. We're here to help. 27% confident. Um, perhaps you can help us and help others. Which activity do you think will make the biggest choice? Really good spread here. So 69% one thought uh, safe space was a good thing. 71% tea break. 41% uh, big promise. Uh, so yeah, a really good spread and that's good because we understand that culture is viewed as differently and perceived as differently in different organizations by different groups. So having a blended mix of solutions help. Would you recommend today's event to other people? The single acid test, 99% said if you would, said you would. So thank you very much. Please do do that. Um, length of the event, it's ideal. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, what was helpful? I mean, it, it looks, I mean, looking at this, it seems like everything was helpful. Um, you know, particular thanks to Network Rail and HS2, you know, two great diversity and inclusion leaders. I know I go on about it, but I meet enough of them week in, week out. And in that industry as well, which is an industry that proves that you can move the dial. Um, so thank you for that. And then we can share those results later on. But a good poll result and thank you for taking part. So we've got a few, a few events coming up. They're on the screen there um, to help people get ready for Race Equality Week. There's something on the 28th of September for Race Network Leads, a few workshops to help you through all the solutions so you can implement them yourselves. Um, there's also some learning circles, small discussion groups with an expert. And for those who are already ready to deliver our solutions, uh, but might need an extra help or a bit of nuance.